The year was 1888. A consignment of sunlight soap embossed with the words Made in England by Lever Brothers arrived at the Calcutta Harbour. It was the world's first packaged and branded laundry soap and so began the era of branded, fast-moving consumer goods. Life Boy in 1895. Pears in 1902, Brook Bond Red Label in 1903, Lux in 1905, Vim in 1913. Many of these brands are more than a century old, but they still remain household names. Soon after their India foray, the Lever brothers were running their business through agents and partnerships. In fact, Hindustan Unilever was not formed till 1930. Today, its products touch 90% of Indian households. It is the market leader in 85% of its portfolio. But over the last decade, HUL decided to dump a one-size-fits-all approach and embrace different strategies with Sanjeev Mehta leading the charge. Hindustan Unilever. Shuru kare ek choti si achai. FMCG is a business where you can never take your eyes off performance management. Like me, reinvent. Brookborn Red Labour. Swad apne ban ka. New Lux. It is a culture where you have brought in the owner's mindset. Sanjeev Mehta is a classic example of a one-company man. He's been with Unilever for over 30 years. He's headed the businesses at Bangladesh, Philippines and North Africa and Middle East. In 2013, he returned to India to head Hindustan Unilever, in his words, as an outsider and turned it to an advantage. I was in Unilever for 21 years. Now, coming in first from outside, I had an advantage. Advantage was an outsider and an insider advantage. I knew the business, but people didn't know me. Of course, the leaders knew me because we interact in various international forums. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you come in as an outsider, you have an advantage. You can look at things with absolutely fresh pair of lens. There is nothing like a holy cow. You can challenge everything. Uh, nothing is a holy cow. You can challenge everything. And challenge he did. Under Sanjeev Mehta, HUL's annual revenue nearly doubled from 27,000 crore rupees to more than 52,000 crore rupees. That's a compounded annual growth rate of over 8%. The company's market cap has zoomed nearly fivefold, from just over 1 lakh crore rupees to nearly 5 lakh crore rupees. Mehta's leadership began with a simple mantra culture, capability, and communication. These became the axis for growth. Yeah, the first important bit is what I would call is under the axis of growth. And here we talk about first the mindset. Then we talk about the portfolio that you have and the portfolio that you create. The, third, the second important bit is the distinctive capabilities that you build, which are hard to replicate by your competitors. And the third axis is what I call as the high performance in not me. And is in this high performance in not me, you have the culture, you have the talent, you have the fetish for execution, you have the way you go about building strategy with huge amount of granularity. HUL takes pride in what it calls purposeful, diverse and inclusive culture. It employs about 21,000 people. As of 2022, women accounted for 44% of the management team. HUL has promised to ensure that 5% of its workforce is made up of people who are differently abled by 2025. The emphasis on culture also helps boost performance and HUL has topped the charts as the employer of choice across sectors. First is uh, the culture, is the high performance culture. It is a culture where you have brought in the owner's mindset. It is a culture where we have delegated to the edge. We have reorganized our business. One is customer clus consumer clusters at the front end. And then we created the country category business teams, which are the mini boards. And these mini boards are empowered to run the business for the year is uh, within the framework that we set for them. And the other is a thrust on employer brand. We are the employer of choice across sectors in the country when we go to the top management institutions in the country. 
So we are able to recruit the best talent, our focus on training, our focus on uh, our giving digital training across for our entire workforce. That's making a tremendous difference. Our purpose is to make sustainable living commonplace. Our vision is to be the most intelligent consumer goods enterprise. And all this has ensured in the kind of return we are talking about, creating a $60 billion delta market cap is from uh, any stretch of imagination is something which is very appealing and would have catapulted the company even otherwise to one of the most uh, valuable companies in the country. From Surf Excel to RIN, from Prepsodent to Close Up to Dove, HOL has more than 50 brands across its three divisions. That's home care, beauty and personal care, along with foods and refreshment. 16 of these brands have a turnover of more than 1,000 crore rupees. Across these three categories, under Sanjeev Mehta's leadership, HOL has managed to drive premiumization, creating a total turnover of 10,000 crore rupees only through high-value products. When it comes to our portfolio, we started a uh, 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 big thrust on market development and premiumization. And market development is about creating the categories of the future. It is about building nascent categories. It is about getting into areas which our consumers have not yet adopted. And to give you the extent of activities on market development, in the last decade, we have been able to create a total turnover of 10,000 crores. Now, just to put in perspective, there are not many companies in India in the FMCG space which have a turnover greater than 10,000 crores, and we have created the segments of the future. When you look at growth, is uh, straddling the price benefit pyramid. We have ensured that we occupy all the benefit space and all the price points in all the big categories. So when times are tough and when there is down trading, we have brands to capture the consumers. And when the times are good and there is up trading, we have brands to cater to the needs of the consumers. So portfolio play becomes extremely important. Soon after Mehta took charge, HUL rolled out a new strategy for growth called Winning in Many Indias. The new structure transformed the company from a four-brand structure at the front end to 14 distinct consumer clusters that roll into five sales branches based out of seven locations. Before 2014, HUL had only four sales offices in Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata. Under the Winning in Many India strategy, it expanded its sales offices to seven, adding new locations like Lucknow, Indore and Bengaluru. For Sanjeev Mehta, the genesis of this idea came from his previous stints heading the North Africa and Middle East region. As chairman of North Africa Middle East. When I was running the 20 countries of in, uh, North Africa Middle East, there was uh, one predominant religion, which was Islam, one predominant language, which was Arabic, and one predominant culture, yeah, the Arabic Islamic culture. Whereas when I walked into India, and while I knew it, it became so apparent that the 29 states of India had less in common than the 20 states, 20 countries of North Africa, Middle East. And that's where the seeds of winning in many Indias were sown, or winning in many Indias. Because winning in many Indias was a massive project. And this entailed virtually changing the wiring of the company while the engine was running. Not very easy to do. And so we needed to prove it and we needed to understand the complexity that will come with winning in many Indias. So that was the whole idea, is to get a competitiveness up, to improve, create headroom for investments, better margins, so that we could invest behind our marketing, building capabilities, strengthening our employer brand, and very importantly, having a rhythm of improving the margins at the bottom line. So that was the big focus area. And by the end of the second year, Shireen, we had proven in, we did the experiment in South of India, which is a bastion for us. 
And when we were convinced that winning in many Indias is a framework which we could turn into a massive capability, then we moved with mass, huge amount of speed. This required setting up new offices. This required rework, rewiring the organization. This required moving hundreds of people. Yeah, not very easy to be done. And while we had to keep running the business. So this is what started. So we have broken up India into 15 relatively homogeneous clusters. And what does winning in many India means? Just to give you an idea, I'll give you a few examples. If you take a Brookborn Red Label. Brookborn Red Label, the blend in Punjab is very different from the blend in Maharashtra, from the blend in east of India, or the Three Roses, which is an equivalent of Red Label, the blend in South India. Yeah, because the tastes are different, the palates are different. In Punjab, it is more about adding tea to milk rather than the other way around. In the many parts of India, you want a much stronger tea. Now, the brand is similar. In many cases, the prices are similar, but the blends are different. Similarly, if you take a Lux soap today, yeah, same color, same pack size, and uh, same price, but the perfumes are different because they are catering to the preference of the consumers in those parts of India. But if you take a laundry, it depends on the kind of water you have, how hard the water is, is what is the job to be done, and so the formulations are different, and our strategies are different. Today, there is nothing like a pan-India strategy. Our strategies are by consumer cluster. Now, this gives us a distinctive edge. In many cases, someone might say we have added complexity. Absolutely. This is adding complexity, but this is like a good cholesterol. It is high-density lipoprotein. It is good for our growth, and it recognizes the diversity and heterogeneity of India. An important bit is that not many companies would be able to replicate uh, winning in many India strategy. Apart from the winning in many India strategy, Sanjeev Mehta also set out to boost the company's EBITDA margins. In just a few years after he took charge, Mehta launched Project Symphony. The idea was simple, inculcate an attitude of ownership among employees and ask them for ideas to improve cost efficiency and effectiveness. As employees responded, Mehta got more than 800 ideas. HUL's margins went from under 16% in FY13 to nearly 25% as of FY22, thanks largely to Project Symphony. Now, improving our EBITDA margin by nearly 100 bips per annum is, of course, something which is not very normally seen, and for a company of our size. And here, it is about instilling the owner's mindset. We started, Shireen, something called a project symphony. Traditionally, is when you look at the cost saving or the efficiency or the productivity uh, agenda in the companies, it is mainly driven by supply chain and finance. But we wanted to democratize. We wanted all our people to feel like and behave like owners. And project symphony is engaging the entire company it is about crowd, crowdsourcing ideas and changing the paradigm of savings. What used to historically deliver 3 4% of our turnover as savings now has been delivering in the vicinity of 7 to 8% as savings every year. And this 7 8% savings allow us to ensure that we are able to put the investment behind our brands, behind marketing, as well as has a rhythm on margin improvement. Well, time for us to enter a short break, but when we return, it was not just organic growth. When we return, we look back at a pivotal acquisition for HUL and Sanjeev Mehta's plans to leverage data and artificial intelligence. All of that's coming up on The Winning Mindset.
At HUL, Meta was not content with organic growth alone. So, in 2020, the company acquired GlaxoSmithKline's consumer healthcare business. And with this acquisition, more iconic brands like Horlicks, Boost and Moldova joined the HUL empire, making it the largest food and refreshment business in India. Meth is equally excited about the vitamins, minerals and supplement space where HUL now has a footprint thanks to the acquisition of GSK Consumer Healthcare. Uh, uh, at some stage you will see us uh, unfolding, which is a big thrust for Unilever globally, is the space of uh, vitamins, minerals and supplements, which then also leads me into our food and refreshment business. You know, after we acquired GSK, uh, the merger of GSK with us, which incidentally I would like to remind people is that it is the biggest merger that has happened in the space of FMCG in India ever. Yeah, it is something which we acquired for nearly over 30,000 crores, but it was uh, essentially a share swap deal and we leveraged a high uh, P ratio and I believe it was a fantastic deal that we got. And uh, why it makes me so bullish about a health food drink business is because as a country, while we consume the gross calories today, the recommended gross calories, as a country we are still seriously deficient when it comes to minerals, vitamins and supplements. And uh, HFD business, Horlicks Boost, the plus range, can play an extremely important role in nourishing a billion plus lives. Meth has also been preparing HUL for a significant digital transformation. Under a plan titled Reimagining HUL, Meth is using data and technology to boost efficiency. Take, for example, the Shikhar app, where a retailer can place an order for goods even when a salesman cannot visit. HUL also deploys Jarvis, an artificial intelligence tool that helps predict the grocery needs of a customer. Meta believes this AI tool is a potent weapon. The area which occupies the maximum amount of my personal time is reimagining HUL. Yeah, that is where I spend a huge amount of time. An FMCG company is a linear value chain. Yeah? You plan, you source, you make, you deliver, and then you have marketing. But here we said, in today's world, where speed will be of essence, where uh, we will be able to pull together disparate information, we need to create ecosystems. And that was the birth of our vision of creating an intelligent enterprise. And today, Shireen, I talked about Shikhar app, I talked about uh, the Pala factory and digital twins, but I can also tell you, we have got models like Jarvis, which optimize the various variables of FMCG. Like how much would you be spending on trade? What would be your pricing? What would you be spending below the line, above the line, on media, on traditional media and digital? And using algorithms and machine learning, we are able to optimize it. And this is one of our secret sources, a very potent weapon. And again, Jarvis has traveled to the rest of the Unilever world, including Americas and Europe, because it's such a powerful tool. So Jarvis as a tool has become a very potent tool where we hold the IP for it. Advertising has been a key pillar for all FMCG brands and HUL has been no exception. Brands like Lifebuoy, Lux, Surf Excel have had some iconic ad campaigns. Under Metha, HUL looks at advertising as a form of engagement with the customer. And last but not the least is building engagement platforms. When we talk about engagement platforms, Shireen, we have to not only have product superiority, but importantly, we have to traverse the minds and emotions of the consumers. So whether it is uh, Stop the Beauty Test, which Dove has been talking about, or the Lakme Fashion Week, or uh, uh, it is the Dirt is Good platform of Surf Excel. This is, these are the kind of engagement platforms that we have built, which allows our consumers to engage with the brands. And this has again been within our axis of uh, ensuring that we have growth, growth top line competitive growth, improving the margins, 
and the return on capital employed. For a company with more than 50 successful brands and several businesses, culture is the key connecting tissue. And Sanjeev Mehta understands the importance of culture, which breeds high performance. And uh, last but not the least, which forms part of the high performance anatomy that I described earlier, is the culture of the company. And culture, it starts from the top. And culture is all about behavior at scale. So the beliefs, the behaviors, and it has to start from the top, and that's how it travels down the organization. And uh, I'm so pleased with the kind of culture we have and the culture that we are building in the company. Well, that is the story of HOL's growth and evolution under Sanjeev Mehta's decade-long watch. As he gets set to retire, he hands over a more valuable and diverse company than the one that he took over. Thanks very much for watching this episode of The Winning Mindset. We'll be back with another successful CEO, a successful entrepreneur. Till then, from all of us here on the team, goodbye. Thanks very much for watching.